First of all, uh, yeah, just I'll throw a little more on my background. Um, I was with um, the Cowboys for about six years and then the West Tigers for about eight years. Um, uh, you know, it's a exciting role that, that uh, this under-20s competition is. I know it's not going to suit everybody, um, but it's, a, it's an initiative and we're going to try and, try and make it work. Um, but that's off the topic. Um, but anyway, the, the topic I've got is communication. I know Brian Cannon there was before was talking about um, uh, the management of things. You'll find on nearly all your topics that they, they will blend into one another. So what I'll talk about might overlap with what Brian talked about and, and, and down the track you'll, you'll get a bit of overlap as well. I'm doing these induction camps for the under 20s the last few weeks and there's a fellow Billy, Billy Williams who um, does a really good talk on cultural awareness and I'll, and I'll bring that up a little bit. Um, later on. We just play, I, I just stole a couple of these little clips. Das hier ist das wichtigste Gelände des Küstenwächter. Das Gelände des Überlebens Rana. The German Coast Guard. We are thinking, we're thinking. What are you thinking about? <laughs> but anyway, it's, it's, it's more about you, you've got to be on the same way with the people you're talking about. And, and maybe, um, yeah, trying to be in, in touch with the players that you're talking to. Uh, and depending on what level you go to, to be a good head coach, it's more than just being a good coach. It's probably about managing, managing everything around you from your support staff. Your players, the players' partners, uh, your marketing departments, your, um, your admin, all your admin staff, your finances. There's so much to go to, that, that goes into being a head coach that you've really got to be on the ball. Now, a couple of little things: um, verbal and non-verbal uh, communication. Um, when it, it's funny, you can pass judgment. People say you, you, you summarize, you sum someone up in about the first 30 seconds, the first minute that, that you meet them. And a lot of it's just got to do with the non-verbal side of things. If, if I was just to meet you for the first time, what's your name? Brad. Brad. Okay, and if I was to look him in the eye and, and, and give him a firm handshake, that's going to give him an impression of me. And it's probably a big thing when, when you go about recruiting players, it's probably more so, where players might come to your club and you've got a certain amount of time to make an impression. And you've got to meet parents and you've got to meet, um, you know, players and friends and girlfriends or whatever it is, these are the types of things that will sell yourself to, to someone else. Um, and it's probably not so much as what's going to hold, hold you with that person, but initially if you can gain a bit of respect uh, and a bit of rapport early on, it's going to make your job so much easier. And you're going to have players come and go. Um, but those few little things there, as far as, I'm terrible with names. But if, if you're a player and you've just come to my club, you know, just a little touching and say, you know, it's, you did well today, or you know, your first training session was good. Just a little bit of rapport, it just separates everyone else, it's you and me. Okay, we're just talking that way, it's just a touch. That's when I say touching. Uh, the voice projection, uh, the hand eye contact, the, uh, uh, the handshake, the eye contact, the voice projection. One of the best uh, cherry measure at the West Tigers, uh, who does the strength and conditioning role there, you, you, you guys are going to be teachers, but to get your point across, it's the way you use your voice. And Cherry Mesher um, uh, is absolutely fantastic in his role, but to hear him, you've got to get right up close to him. So he'll say, well, what are we going to do today? We're going to do some high measure. So, and then we're going to go and do some, some high measure. Now, just initially, everyone else has gone quiet. Like, everyone's gone quiet to try and tune in on me. So you have to block everything out. Now I think what he what he does is a great thing because he's he's bringing everyone and saying, look, it's really important what I'm saying. If you're not focused on me, you'll, you'll miss out. So all the attention will, will, will go to you. So you know, I think that's a really good method. If I'm barking uh, at, uh, barking things as loud as I can, it means that I'm desperately trying to get your attention. Well, come on, we're going to do this, we're going to do some bounding, we're going to do all these, these other things. So I'm trying to get your attention, whereas it's, if, if you go a little bit softer, 
you've got to try and get my attention. You've got to try and focus on what I'm saying because what I'm saying is important. So I'm not saying always be quiet. I'm just saying it's very important. So, and, and it might be a case of when you really want to emphasize something, it's then you drop, drop your voice. So, um, <coughs> the distancing, uh, again, if, if, again, if I don't really want to involve you, then I, I'll leave it a fairly loose arrangement. I stand a bit further back. So yeah, yeah, you know, we're pretty good at that. But again, if, if I'm talking to somebody, something really, really good, okay, and then you, those couple of things you maybe can improve on. But it's cut everyone else out, it becomes more of an intimate thing. So don't always stand at a far, don't always stand, uh, stand close. Polynesian and, and, and uh, Aboriginal uh, Indigenous population, say of the under 20s, is going to be around about 50%. You guess at all. Now, so we're dealing with a different culture, and you guys will coach people with different cultures as well. And I'd like to have some input here because I don't profess to be the, the expert on this. Um, so, uh, coming up to, to, to Indigenous groups of people, you've just got to be very <coughs> aware of a cultural difference. Now, um, you might even shed some light on this one, but most of the time, an Indigenous person or a Polynesian person, when they give it a handshake, will generally be fairly soft. So if I wanted it, it's, it's a fairly soft. And I think it's more about a respect thing. If, you're, if I haven't met you before, or you're a coach or an elder person, it's about just soft. I'll, I'll let you control the situation. Okay, so it's a soft thing. And generally, there's not the eye contact. So, yeah, nice to meet you. Okay, it's, it's not like I'm not interested, but it's just the way that a lot of these cultures are. Up. So they're the two, two, the first thing I said is about giving that strong handshake, how you doing? Okay. You won't get that from all cultures. So you as a coach has got to try and understand where, where people are coming from. And there'll be a distance there. And that's something that you've got to break down. Uh, and you've got to try and work out. Don't take it as a negative, you know, it may not be a positive, but you just got to try and work that out. The thing about gestures, um, we, we, we had a couple of players this year who just would not speak. Would not speak with their mouth. But, you know, speak with the eyes. You could not get anything out of it, but everything's with the eyes. So you, you, you've actually got to communicate with the eyes here. Understand what I'm talking about? And if you just went like that, with your eyes, or yeah, it's yes, no, or don't know. Uh, it, it's, just, um, it's just something you've got to read into as well. So very, very shy, but they will talk with their eyes. Using words, I'll tell a Billy Williams story. Um, Johnny Carlo, who was on the, the end of the, the Warriors back one a few years back, uh, all the Maori boys, the Polynesian boys in, inside of him, he said he, knew, he did not know what was going on because it was all, you know, all the moves were just falling that way. And he was on the end line, had no idea what was going on. But towards the end, he, he said he sort of got a bit of an understanding there was a certain whistle that he knew was coming his way. So, again, that, that's, that's something that you maybe just part of a culture and you just got to try and understand. As far as, like, yeah, talk up. You as a coach say, you've got to talk, you've got to do this, you've got to, you've got to look people in the eye. It won't always work that way. So you... Freddie Fiddler actually said this, he said, don't try to be someone else because everyone else is already taken. Okay, of course you can't pretend to be someone else all the time. You might go to the odd session and, 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 and put on this bravo that, that, that you're the strong, tough man or whatever it be. But it's a long haul, the season's a long haul. You can't, you can't put on that for too long. So you've got to try and find your styles and, and just and be with it. Um, and the most important thing is being consistent. Um, uh, you know, not, not so much consistent in emotion, because you know you're going to go up and down emotions, but you just got to be consistent. I heard Brian mention the fact about motivation. Uh, you've got to be motivated the whole time. You're putting on, you, when I say you're putting on a show, you've got to be you've got to be at your best every time you're doing a session. So your motivation's got to come within because you've got to motivate everyone else. Who's going to motivate you guys? It's got to come from within. And then you've got to try and keep that as consistent as possible. Especially when you start your session and when you finish your session. So if you're upbeat, at the start of the session, players will be. And if you finish your session in a fairly upbeat manner, everyone walks away and says, yeah, not a bad session. Um, and, and they'll look forward to the next session. Some people thought we were crazy, but I'm a firm believer in paradigm breaking, outside the box thinking. It went. <laughs> it was over 15 minutes ago, Mitch! And since Terry's been with us, 
our productivity has gone up to 46 <laughs> percent. We're getting more from our employees than ever before. You know you need a cover sheet on your TPS reports, Bridget. That ain't new, baby. <laughs> hey, Janice. <laughs> But what's really impressed me is how Terry's become part of the Felcher family. He fits right in here. There's a little discord, Doug! To be honest, I wish Reebok sent us ten Terry Tanks. Coaches field is it? You guys are probably doing that with me right now. To, to get respect from the players, the players are going to be.